Hello, and welcome to the May edition of our U.S. Executive Podcast. I'm Greg Dacco, Chief U.S. Economist, and I'm joined today by Kathy Bosiantic, Chief U.S. Financial Economist. Uh, thank you, Greg. Well, first, before we get started, just want to wish you a happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, secondly, uh, as your birthday present, you need to tell us uh, the latest view on, on the outlook for the U.S. economy GDP forecast. But underlying that, but then on top of that, of course, we have the latest round of increased tariffs. So where, where does that all play out? That's right. Well, we, we actually released uh, a, a new base, a new baseline forecast uh, that incorporates the latest escalation of tensions because as of uh, just about a week ago, the U.S. imposed uh, an increase in tariffs from 10 percent to 25 percent on 200 billion of imports from China, and China retaliated with average tariffs of about 18 percent on 60 billion uh, of their own imports from, from China. Uh, recall that's about essentially twice, uh, if not a little bit larger, than, uh, than uh, the previous uh, tariffs that had been in place uh, since September of last year. Now, what that does to the, the trade flows between the two countries is essentially it removes about 0.3 percent of GDP relative to a no, base, uh, no tariff baseline. Um, it removes about one-tenth off of our prior baseline, which already incorporated the pre-existing tariffs. So um, essentially, it's a non-negligible shock to the economy. Three-tenths is, of course, something that we should not discount uh, for the U.S. economy. Um, and it removes about um, eight-tenths uh, from uh, China GDP and about three-tenths from, uh, from uh, global GDP, again, relative to a no baseline tariff. But our baseline already had included most of the tariffs in place, the 25% tariffs on 50 billion of bilateral imports, as well as 10% uh, on 200 billion of imports from, from China, and China retaliating with 8% on 60 billion. So uh, an additional drag on the economy, uh, which actually brings up a, an interesting question for the Fed is, you know, what's the Fed going to do in this type of environment where you have rising tensions between two of the la largest trading partners in the world? But I think it's status quo. I think they kind of continue to wait and see and, and basically analyze the incoming data uh, because it's unclear of how long and how intense uh, the trade uh, war uh, will continue and also what impact it actually has on, on GDP growth here in the U.S. and, and, um, and inflation as well. But I, I think for the Fed, you know, we ask this question a lot, what would it take to get them to ease yep. policy? You know, w one hand, you have you have to have inflation still below two uh, percent, so core inflation below two percent, which it is. Mm -hmm. uh, financial conditions become a lot tighter. We've seen a little tight tightening, but not a lot. And business and, and consumer confidence have to take a hit. Yes, I think all of that together would kind of play that role. But we also get questions a lot on what's we the do. impact of um, inflation from uh, the escalating trade war. And, yeah, and it's quite an interesting, um, you know, uh, result that we that we get uh, using our global economic model. What we find is that yes, you do get the initial hit to inflation. That's not surprising. We know that U.S. consumers, U.S. businesses pay the tax cuts, uh, the tax uh, from from the uh, increased tariffs. Um, but the way it works is that essentially you get that lift from higher prices on imported goods, uh, but then you get a deflationary effect from weaker growth because of the tariffs. So if you look at just the direct positive effect on inflation, the latest round of tariffs relative to no baseline uh, situation would essentially lift inflation by two tenths this year and three tenths next year. This year, the deflationary growth effect from reduced growth is relatively minimal, but next year, the deflationary effect is about three-tenths, so almost offsetting exactly the boost from, from the higher tariffs. And we think the Fed will actually overlook that transitory boost to prices and instead focus on the damage, perhaps longer-lasting damage, uh, to growth uh, from, from, uh, from these, uh, these tariffs. Um, I think one thing that's also interesting in this context is the way financial markets have reacted and the way in general financial conditions have evolved because I think it has a big implication for how the economy then reacts uh, to, to the escalation. So what have we seen recently in terms of financial conditions? So we've seen a little bit of tightening relative to where we were, but still overall our proprietary index still shows that conditions are still rather accommodative. So the equity market has not really sold off in a very big way. Corporate bond spreads haven't really widened out greatly. They had a little bit of an increase in volatility, but again, all in all, markets kind of taking this in stride relatively well. Um, that, not that there are some disruptions, but, but relatively well. Is it perhaps well. because there's a lot of mixed messaging from the administration? One day saying trades are ongoing, the next saying that they're removing tariffs vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Canada and Mexico and the steel and aluminum front. The very next day saying that they're going to impose stricter restrictions with regards to uh, the information and, and communication uh, sector with uh, restrictions on Huawei. 
Do you think that that perhaps is, is a big factor? I, I think that's true, and I, I think that it engenders um, a lot of uncertainty in the market, and in some sense that breeds more volatility. On the other hand, it also paralyzes people saying, okay, which way do we go? Is it, is it better news or, or worse news? Like you said, lifting some of the previous tariffs on, on some of our trading partners is good news. So it's kind of, uh, you know, putting forth trade policy tweet by tweet, hour by hour. We, we can't miss that at all. And I guess, yeah. Yeah, and that's perhaps, I mean, w one thing that's quite interesting is uh, how confidence, private sector confidence reacts to this because the latest uh, confidence report we got actually showed uh, a, a, an enormous surge in confidence, uh, which was took everybody by surprise. Um, how should we read that? Is that a sign that people don't care about trade tensions? Well, I think both uh, the consumer confidence sentiment report we got on Friday and also the National Federation of Independent Businesses, which monitors um, the sentiment of businesses, was it, both were strong and, and, and um, uh, sentiment particularly was higher than expected. But it was prior to the enactment of the latest round of, of tariff increases. Okay. So I think that's key to keep in mind. Yep. And we have to see the next readings of that. So we'll get consumer sentiment in about two weeks. We'll get consumer confidence. I think that will be very critical to see, get a read of the consumer and also businesses, right? There's been, I, you know, reported that businesses are starting to hold back a little bit on, on capital expenditures. Um, and I think the other thing is maybe impact the consumer. We've done some good work showing that a lot of this increased tariff is going to offset for Right. A, a vast majority of Americans, the tax cut benefits. Yeah. I mean, that's that's very important. I mean, the context of these trade tensions is really the primary factor that we should be analyzing today because we have an economy that's slowing. An economy that was accelerating in 2018 is now slowing quite sharply. We expect growth to essentially slow from 3% at the end of last year to 2% uh, at the end of this year on the back of this fading fiscal stimulus. And the key question is, essentially, how do people react? Uh, so far, um, essentially, we believe that uh, the, the increase in tariffs will erase the tax benefits for essentially most low-income and middle-income families. The tax benefits from the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act was worth about $1,300 for all Americans, but that was heavily skewed towards the higher income earners. For low-income families, you're think, think, talking about $50. Um, for middle-income families, $800. The tariffs themselves could essentially lead to a hit to most households in GDP terms worth about $500. So for most families, that will essentially negate most of the, the benefits from the tax cuts. And we know that an escalation of tariffs to, um, that would impact all consumer goods from China would actually have a disproportionately larger effect on these middle to low income families that are more highly sensitive uh, to these, these direct consumer goods. So a lot to pay attention to. Trade is really central right now to the economy, to the Fed's uh, path forward, and something that we'll be paying very close attention to in the, the coming weeks and coming months. Absolutely. So thank you very much, Kathy, and we'll speak again uh, next month. Thank you. Thank you.